Blood Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. Faithful Ballot Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling story, Underwater Adventure. The Green Hornet strikes again. front pages of your city newspapers, and you'll note story after story of accidents happening to people on the streets, highways, and right in their own homes. A woman is struck by a bus as she crosses an intersection on the wrong light. A man dies of carbon monoxide fumes due to faulty exhaustive system in his car. A child is burned to death because of carelessly placed matches. There's an old adage that starts, it's never too late, but it doesn't apply to accidents. Once one has happened, the consequences must be taken. And you might be the unlucky person who will have to take them next. But accidents can be stopped. Play safe. Play the rules of safety at home, at work, and in traffic. And now, the Green Hornet. <laughs> Bright moonlight was reflected in the smooth waters of the bay, and also in the gleaming black finish of the long, sleek car which sped along the shore road. It was in the small hours of the morning when traffic was negligible, and the powerful car had nothing to impede its progress as it moved like a speeding shadow on the broad, ribbon-like highway. Behind the wheel was a sinister and startling figure, for the Green Hornet was once again on a mission in his super-powered black beauty. The masked figure spoke to the man beside him. Cato, that salvage scout will be around the next bend of the shoreline. Well, how do you know they don't leave watchmen to guard diving equipment, Mr. Britt? They probably have left someone to guard it. But he won't be looking for a visit from the Green Hornet. And so far as they know, everybody believes they're a legitimate salvage company. Well, how we get out to scow? There's one of those small rubber rafts back in the luggage compartment with a small cylinder of gas to inflate it. Oh, I not know you put it there. We'll paddle out and board the scow. Then hope for the best. So there it is now. We'll swing off the road and drive toward the shore. Then the fun will begin. Lucky we had moonlight bright enough so that we didn't have to use our lights. Yes, sir, that's good. Guard not see car moving toward shore. Come on, Cato. We'll get the raft out of the luggage compartment. Remember, voices and sounds carry over the water, so go easy. Yes, sir. I'll be careful. I'll carry it near the water, then open the valve. It's not very heavy. There. Now turn on the valve. Yes, sir. It's still up fast. Yeah, it's quite an invention. All right, let's get up the water. It's ready. A small paddle stuck in the side there. Oh, wait a second. I smear some mud on your face in case we run into trouble. All right. Now, hope we get to scar before anyone sees us. It's not good if bullets hit rubber raft, maybe. Don't worry about that when it happens. Okay, let's start paddling. Alongside 
find out. I don't see anyone. Did he climb out the skull, no? Yes. Now, come on. Did you see anyone? Not yet. Give me your hand. It looked like everything quiet. Take no chances. Come on. Look inside that small cabin. Is his gas gun ready? Yes. I'll probably have to use it. The door's partly open. Guard lying on bunk. Wait here. Hey, who's that? So bad you woke up, fella. I heard it. If I reach my gun, you... But you won't reach it. Take this. Yes. Uh, oh. Help me put him back on the bunk. It looks like he only puts him on skull. Yes. You'll enjoy a good sleep for a few hours. Now, let's get to work. Come on. The dining equipment must be under that door, Paul, and what do you plan to do? Destroy equipment? Are you kidding? I'm going to put on the diving suit and go down while you pump the air for me. Well, that's dangerous. So what? Come on, help me get the cover off. Yes, it's all here. Oh, but I don't understand, Mr. Britt. Why you want to go down into water in diving suit? You must tell me why we come here. Why well, you're helping me under this diving suit, Kato, I'll tell you why we came here. A little over a week ago, we had a press release from City Hall saying the city was contracting to have the bottom of the bay and the coves out this way inspected for debris resulting from the war, such as wreckage, sunken mines, and so forth. Well, this afternoon, I was in my office when Mike Axford came in and mentioned the fact that the work had begun. Right along the shore road, out along the bay, when we saw one of them boats they do deep sea diving from. Of course, it didn't look like much of an outfit to me. The one that's doing the work, that is. Well, what do you mean? The salvage company mentioned by the city in that release is one of the best, with up to date equipment. <laughs> the dirty looking old scow they're using up there in that cove looks like a good blow would put it under. But I guess they know their business. Well, just where are they working? Well, now, let's see. Oh, yeah. Remember that daring hold-up about a year ago when Spike Gorlitz and two others used tear gas bombs to snatch a strong box containing about a quarter of a million in cash? Yes, I remember that. They grabbed it as it was being taken from the truck into the bank. Sure, that's the job I mean. Well, Spike and the others were trailed to a cove up the bay. The car they'd used was there on the shore, and they'd set out in the motorboat. Oh, yes. So they were caught, weren't they, after running a battle with a police boat? Yes. Except that Spike was said to have been shot as he dived into the bay to make a getaway. The cops looked for his body but couldn't find it. And they never did get the strong box full of dough either. Both the other thugs went to the chair for killing one of the guards in that hold-up. Yes, I recall the whole case now. So it's in that cove that the salvage company is working, eh? That's right. <laughs> Funny thing, too. Just yesterday, I ran into the head of the city council, Mr. Burbank. And I asked him when they were going to get started on that work. I guess he gave me a bum steer on purpose. What do you mean, bum steer? Well, he glared at me. Then said the contract called for starting to work in a month. And the city was lucky to get him at it even that soon. He said his newspaper guys are always wanting them to rush things and do the impossible. Then later that day, I saw that the work had been started. That was yesterday. So I figured Burbank gave me a bum steer on purpose. Yes, maybe you did at that. Uh, yes, I'll run along to cops headquarters. I'll be getting in touch with you later, Reed. After Axford left, I began putting two and two together, Keith. I checked through the city hall and found the work has not begun. So I decided this outfit's a phony, and probably here, hunting for that strong box. Oh, so that it. Green Hornet come here to find out his strong box on bottom of bay and cold. Yes. There. Now you can help me with the headgear. It's up to you to keep the pump going, so I'll have air. I hope their communi intercommunication system works so I can talk to you from below. Well, it looks like it in good condition. Well, now I put headpiece on suit. Then you'll be ready to submerge. Working with careful haste, Cato and Britt adjusted the heavy headgear. Then as Britt Reed slid over the side and sank into the water, Cato manned the pump. By means of earphones and mouthpiece similar to those worn by telephone operators, Cato was in speaking contact with Britt. You all right, Mr. Britt? So far, everything's okay. Mr. Britt! Mr. Britt! What's the matter? Somebody leading shore of Cove in motorboat. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I hear boat plainly. What we do? There's not much time. We must do something.
While still operating the air pump, Kato reached over and pushed a lever which started an electric winch. Then he watched hopefully as the taut line gradually began to pull Britt Reed to the top. Meanwhile, in the approaching motorboat, two rough-looking men strained their eyes toward the moonlit deck of the scow. Hey, you see anyone, Spike? Yeah. Looks like someone near the pump. Cut the motor off a second so we can tell if the pump's still working. Okay. You hear it, Bill? Yeah. Yeah, it's still going. <laughs> Good. It means whoever's snooping around there is still below. We get there before he gets topside. Sure. The guy at the pump won't dare stop pumping unless he wants his pal to die. Start the motor up again. Right. <laughs> we come up to the sky on the off side. And if the lug at the pump decides to take a shot at it, he won't have a chance. Hey, uh, you want me to, Spike? I'll pick him off with a bullet when we get a little closer. That is close enough for me to spot him. Yeah, why bother? We get him anyway. Can't leave the pump like you said a minute ago. Yeah, we're getting there, Spike, and the pump's still going. We'll slow down before we ram into the scow. I'm heading for where that rope hangs over the side, Spike. I cut the motor off, you grab it. Yeah. You better cut it off now. Come on, we'll go for it. Have your rod handy. Okay, I'm ready. You go ahead. All right. Come on, Bill. See, let's tie this line. All right, coming. Yeah. Now, listen. I'm still going. That means whoever went down to Snoop is still underwater in the diver's suit. Yeah. The other guy must know we're here, but he can't do nothing. Yeah, let's go forward and get things settled. Come on. All right, you. You can stop pumping now. No. If I stop, you're not getting to diver suit. Well, now, ain't that too bad, Spike? If he stops, his friend won't get in here. Oh, wait a minute. Go on. Keep on pumping. I got another idea. You must have heard us coming. How come you didn't start the winch going? Try to get your friend out of the water. Yeah, never mind that, Bill. Dirty face don't look too bright anyway. Maybe that's why. What you do now? Well, before I answer that question, I want to ask you one. Ah, come on, Spike. We're wasting time. Let's get this over with. Yeah, wait a minute, Bill. All right, you. Now tell me. Who went down in that damn diving suit and why'd he do it? It's better I not tell you. Well, listen to me. Look, you, you'll tell me all right. If you don't, I'll just make you stop pumping and leave your friend where he is. If I tell you... Then you help get him up, perhaps? Sure, sure, we'll help you get him up, won't we, Bill? That's right. If you say we will, Spike, then he can count on it. Then I tell you, man who go down in diving suit, he is Green Hornet. What? Hey, what's that you said? You said the Green Hornet. Well, what do you know? This is... Now, nah, look, Spike, we can't help him bring the Green Hornet up. He's too slick. Why not just let him stay below and make this guy stop pumping air to him? No, you not do that. Ah, don't worry. You keep on pumping. But Spike, don't you... worry, Bill. Pumping won't do any good in a minute. So what? What you do with knife? Yes, yeah, Spike. What are you going to do? Yes, this. No, he not cut airline. No, yeah. Watch. <laughs> yeah, did it? Even the Green Hornet couldn't save himself now. Green Hornet adventure in just a moment. Whenever the subject of international control of atomic energy comes up, are you inclined to think, I'm not a scientist or a statesman, so why should I worry about it? Well, actually, atomic power born during war years is your baby, too. Yours and every American's. And whether or not that baby grows up to be a menace depends on you. Remember, it will be the combined voices of all Americans through our representatives in Congress that will determine our policy before the United Nations Atomic Energy Commission. When the time comes for us to ratify a method of atomic control, be sure you know the facts. Keep well informed on our government's proposals for atomic control. And now, back to the Green Hornet. <laughs> Bill and 
Cato stood watching the bubbles appear on the surface of the water where the severed air hose had sunk. Then Spike turned to Cato and spoke. Now, you sneaking rat, we settled with you. And your pal, the Green Hornet, won't ever show up again to help you out. Oh, I don't know about that, Spike. Gordon. Hey, what the... Don't move, you're both covered. Holy mackerel, Spike, it's the Hornet. But, well, it can't be that much said the Hornet was in the diving That's suit. a trick. The guy lied to us. No, he didn't lie to you. You asked him who'd gone down in the diving suit. He told you the truth when he said the Green Hornet had. And how'd you get here? My friend heard you putting out from shore. By fast work, I managed to get up on deck and out of the suit. Then we sent the empty suit down again, and he continued to pump air to fool you. Which gave me a chance to get the drop on you. Yes. And now a diving suit not be of use to you any longer. Well, I'll pay. What do you intend to do now, Arnie? Look, Rollitz. The police think you're dead. As I see it, you've escaped. And knowing the hiding place of the stolen bank money, you came here to find it. So what? Uh, the cops did plug me with a bullet, went over the side in that fight. But it wasn't serious. And I'm a damn good swimmer, see? I swam underwater as far enough away. Then I managed to get ashore. If you think I'm going to let you spoil everything without putting up a fight now, you're... Maybe entire... I don't intend to spoil things for you, Spike. What do you mean? I know there's a fortune below. If you'd found it, you wouldn't still be here, right? Go on. Well, let's work together. There's enough for all of us, Doctor. Now, take it easy, Spike. Don't trust this money. I just stood by and watched you as you thought you were taking my life. Now I'm in a position to take yours. I'm giving you a chance. If you want to take it. All right, Hornet. We'll play along. Good. Well, what are we going to use for a diving suit, Spike? The only one we had at the bottom of the bay now. Tell you what, Hornet. If you want to share what's down there, it's up to you to get another diving suit. Well, that isn't going to be easy. Uh, for the Green Hornet, it ought to be. You can grab one from the warehouse, the A Salvage Company, at the foot of 3rd Street in town. They keep them stored in a room at the back, facing the water. Okay, I'll make a try for one. Then we'll meet you here tomorrow night, on the scow. The deal. Now, come on. I'll take you over to show in the motorboat. We'll be sure you get that diving suit, or we'll all be out of luck. Now, let's get going. Brett and Cato were back in their apartment, talking over the events of the evening. Mr. Britt, you really mean to go through this deal you make with Spike Gorlitz? Right up to a certain point, Cato. Gorlitz is the only one who can readily locate that strong box. What I want to do is to make sure he does locate it. Then act. But they're killers. And there'll be three of them. You not forget men we put out with a gas gun. No, I haven't forgotten. But I'll be ready for any trouble. You plan to steal a diving suit? Yes. And that'll be where the trail will start for the police to follow. But if we go on scout, too, and police come, there's danger that they trap Hornet along with Gordon and Pal. I'll have to take that chance. We'll go out tomorrow night and hope for the best. The following evening, Britt and Cato were ready to carry out their plan. We go directly to warehouse from here, Mr. Britt? Yes. Then after we get the suit, if we do get it, we'll give the police our trail to follow out to the scout. It must be done so it doesn't look like a double cross. Otherwise, Spike will get suspicious and refuse to go down in the suit. Come on, let's get started. Stepping through a secret panel in the rear of a closet in the bedroom, Britt Reed and Cato went along a narrow passageway built within the walls of the apartment itself. This passage led to an adjoining building which fronted on a dark side street. Though supposedly abandoned, this building served as the hiding place for the sleek, superpowered Black Beauty, streamlined car of the Green Hornet. Rick Reed pressed a button. The great car roared into life. A section of the wall in front raised automatically, then closed as the gleaming Black Beauty sped into the darkness. at the waterfront, Britt found the back part of the warehouse deserted. Taking Cato with him, he found it a fairly simple matter by means of certain small instruments he always carried, which would open any door or window to effect an entrance. Taking one of the diving suits, he and Cato made their way back to the Black Beauty, parked in the shadows alongside the warehouse. Here we are, Cato. Open the luggage compartment. Yes, sir. 
Right, it opens. All right. Hey, hold it. We'll drive out along the bay to the cove where Spike is to meet us for the boat. And on the road, just this side of the cove, I noticed a gas station. You can phone the police from there. That will give us time to get Spike down on the diving suit. It's good nobody oh, see us coming. Hey, hey. That warehouse guard. They're going, Tato. Since that guard saw us leaving, it may interfere with our plans, Cato. How do you mean? The police will be on the lookout now, and it may not give us time to get to the scow as we planned. Especially if they spot us and follow. Well, that not be good. Spike and friends find out police follow, they leave in hurry. Yes, and that's what I don't want. Spike is an escaped killer. I want the police to get him. We hope police not get on trail of Hornet too soon, then. Yes. Well, so far, we've been lucky. Step on it. We'll soon be on the shore road. Meantime, a patrol car waited at a crossroad. Well, the expert, we're on the hunt for that spout between the Hornet again. That warehouse guard said he was headed this way. Say, Sarge, wonder why the Hornet would want to steal a diving suit. That's a new one on me. <laughs> no telling, Mike. That guy's liable to steal anything, to my way of thinking. But you can bet your bottom dollar he had a good reason for doing it, and a reason that spells trouble for the police force. Uh, lucky we were out this way in that other car when he heard that radio warning. Maybe we're in time to hit him off. That's what I'm hoping to do. Here comes a car heading for the shore road. And the shore moving fast, Sarge. Yeah. But if it's just another speedster, he's in luck. Because we ain't going to waste time following him. Hey, look at him come. Yeah. Have a good mind. Holy cow. That's him. That's the harness. So it is. Get going, Cassidy. Get on it. Don't let him out of your sight. Yep. like police car waiting at crossroad, Mr. Britt. You're right, Shadow, and they're following us. If Spike hears that siren, he'll skip and we'll never find him. Slide over here and let me take the wheel. Oh, yes, sir. Be careful. Easy now. <laughs> what you plan to do? I'll turn in line at the next road and try to lose him. There's a road just up ahead. Will you a smoke screen, perhaps? No, not yet. I want the police to get far enough away from the shore road so they won't spoil things. Then we'll use the smoke screen. Here's the turn. Driving far inland, Britt led the police away from the shore road. Then, using the smoke screen on the Black Beauty, he managed to get a good lead on him. Still at high speed, he doubled around until he had again reached the shore road. Within a short time, he reached the cove, where they were to meet Spike Gorlitz. I'll have to move fast. I want to get the diving suit into Spike's boat before the police show up. They're bound to come this way soon. Uh, come on. <laughs> Here comes Spike and Friend. Well, Hornet, you get what you went after? Of course. It's in the back of the car. Oh, there it is. Better than the one you had, too. Yeah, help me with this belt. Hey, sure. <laughs> we carry it to the motorboat. Come on, Hornet. Here we are. I laid into the boat. Bill. Right. <laughs> okay, Hornet. You and your helping can get in now. Hey, listen, the cops. Hey, they must have followed the Green Hornet. We better scram and fast. Yeah, come on. Wait a minute, Spike. You're not going anyplace. Hey, look, the guy's got a gun. He must be nuts. Hey, what's the idea? The cops are after you, too? I'm taking that shot. All right, Mark, some Bill. I'm right. Spike, oh, get this, Mark. I think not. Oh! Hey, knock Bill out. Let's slam, Hornet. I'll make a deal with you. Come on. Take this, killer. No. <laughs> really quick, or they find Black Beauty. Come on, hurry. Come on, Cassidy. There's a motorboat. Yeah. And the moon's bright enough to show two guys laying on the ground. Wait up for me. Come on. Hey, Cass, the harness. He's leaving. Come on, follow him. We got something here we can lay our hands on. Let's have a look. Sovereign snakes. Two guys stretched out cold. Let me put my light on them. Great day, look there. What are you great daying about? That mug is Spike Garlitz. Are you sure? I thought he was dead. Well, he ain't. That's him right there. Hey, Sarge. Look here in the motorboat. Well, what do you know? 
A diving suit. Must be the one the Hornet stole tonight. Wonder what they want that for. For diving, no doubt. <laughs> Look out there, a salvage scow. I know. Burbank, the city council, told me they hadn't started that work yet. But I saw that scow there, so he knew that... Hold on, Ashford. I know the city hasn't started that work yet. There's only one answer. Spike Garlitz dumped that strong box of money in the bay when they were making their getaway. He's come back to find it. Say, I bet you're right at that, Sarge. You're darn tootin' I'm right. We'll get divers to work right away until they get that money. <laughs> It'll be a feather in the cap for the police. Getting back the bank money and catching Spike Garlitz. That's right, Sarge. I give you credit. Well... Maybe we didn't get the Green Hornet, but by chasing him, we got these killers. <laughs> and a chance to get the dough for the bank. Let's get them back to town. I'll radio Harbor Police to raid that scow in case there's others out there. At least the Green Hornet didn't get his hands on that dough. And wait till he hears we caught his pals. Don't be <laughs> stupid, Mike. <laughs> didn't he leave him here for us for gassing him? <laughs> uh, he's hard to figure out, that Hornet. But believe you me, he's nobody's fool. You can bet on that. Every day of the week, ABC has a continual procession of top flight programs. For example, there's Breakfast in Hollywood, a show that has become a daily weekday listening habit with millions of Americans. And speaking of daily habits, our Al Pierce show has also been providing fun and laughs for people everywhere. In the evenings, we've got more comedy plus mystery, adventure, and the musical programs lined up to entertain you. Yes, there's great listening on ABC every day. So try us today and tomorrow by tuning in to your ABC station early and stay tuned late. And listen to the Green Hornet next week at this same time. the police were really on their toes in the Green Hornet adventure you have just heard. And to be assured of an efficient police force in any city, it's up to the people to vote for the right officials who are to head their city government. When you vote, make sure of the candidate first. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. Al Neal speaking. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.